the easiest one to understand, and certainly the one in most use, is symmetric key cryptography, or shared secret key cryptography, as it's frequently called. And what this means is that the data is protected with some kind of special key, some type of secret information that only I have and the recipient has. So when we're using codes to scramble data up, we're using one key to protect the data and the same key to unprotect the data. So if I'm talking to my friend Chris and I want to send him a message, we both have to have the same key at the same time. I use it to protect the information. He uses it to unprotect the information and read it. And then vice versa. The same key can be used to encrypt on Chris's side so that when I receive it, I can decrypt using that same key. These algorithms go back quite a long ways and they're very efficient for doing large amounts of data, which is something you want to be familiar with for ethical hacking when you're protecting large amounts of data. The challenge is always the key distribution. How do I get the same key in a bunch of different places? Or how do I establish a key? If Chris that I want to speak to is on the other side of the planet, or in space, or inside a, a secret building or secret environment where I can't really comfortably exchange information, how do we establish that key? That's always been the difficult part of symmetric key cryptography. And symmetric algorithms, you want to just be roughly familiar with these. You don't have to memorize them, but it's a good process or it's a good idea to actually memorize these a little bit for the exam just so that you know which ones are symmetric versus which are not symmetric. You don't definitely do not need to memorize how they work. DES, the data encryption standard, goes back to the 70s. It's been around quite a long time. It's certainly essentially the cornerstone of modern cryptography. And its evolution into triple DES, which is the same algorithm except three times, usually with three separate keys, sometimes with two keys, but most often three keys. And... These other algorithms that are out here, I won't read them off to you. The other one, though, that's that's in prevalent use right now is the AES, or Advanced Encryption Standard. That's one that started to come into play over the last few years because of the acceptance of the U.S. government and, and across the world kind of a uh, common agreement that this was the best algorithm going forward that people should use. So the two that you see most often right now are triple DES, or 3DES as it's written, because it is DES just three separate times and actually is quite resilient against attack, and AES, which is based on an algorithm called Rindle. On the other hand, asymmetric cryptography, luckily you don't need to know the math behind it, because if you don't need to know the math, it's pretty darn simple. Instead of having one key, in my example where I want to talk to Chris, so we have to have the same key, exact same key on both ends, in asymmetric key cryptography, Chris can have one key and I can have a separate but related key. So Chris might say, hey, when you want to talk to me, here's the key you should use to protect the data, to encrypt the data. And when I use that key to encrypt the data, only the corresponding key that Chris has can decrypt the data. That's kind of how asymmetric cryptography works in a nutshell. It's having two separate yet related keys, one typically called the private key that's held very, very tightly. It's a tightly guarded secret by whoever owns it, and it's usually one entity. And then a public key that anyone can use that's actually free knowledge. You could post it on your on your Facebook if you want. You could take out a, an ad in the New York Times and say, here's my public key. Anyone can encrypt with your public key, but only you can decrypt because only you have that same private key or the corresponding private key. Having a different private key or having a different public key relate, uh, results in data not descrambling correctly or encoding correctly, and it just doesn't work. So in this visual right here that I've drawn, you can see that the public key and the private key are different, but they are related. They're actually generally created at the same time by the same entity, and then one of them is distributed. The public key is distributed. The private key is helped closely. There's pretty much just one algorithm you need to know for public key cryptography. It's the RSA algorithm. It stands for Rives, Shamir, Adelman. Those are the three gentlemen that actually invented it. And it's been in use for a very long time. It's very well proven. And it's pretty much everywhere you're going to find public key cryptography. There are some other algorithms, generally speaking, based on elliptic curve cryptosystems. 
they are not in as broad a use. They may actually get more exciting in the future. But for the moment, RSA is the one you need to associate with public key cryptography or asymmetric key cryptography. And hash functions are an interesting one. They're essentially a thumbprint of a bunch of data. So take a message or a text file or any file or any giant chunk of data you like, or a small chunk of data, but think about a giant chunk of data, and run a hash algorithm against it. And what you get is a very, very small result, typically 256 bytes or 512 bytes, that's reasonably unique to the input. This essentially becomes, if you think of it as a thumbprint, it becomes a thumbprint of the data where any other data is going to leave a slightly different or a drastically different thumbprint. But in all likelihood, only that same data is going to result in that same thumbprint. That's hash algorithms. They are designed to protect integrity of messages or integrity of any data because if the data is altered in any way, the hash value from that data changes. In fact, mathematically, the better hash algorithms uh, work such that any change in the data, even the tiniest little bit flip, literally, you take a one gigabyte file and you flip one bit somewhere in the file, the output of the hash between those two versions will change by roughly 50% in an unpredictable, uncalculatable way, such that you can't go back from the changed hash to the data or from any hash back to the data. That's why it's called a one-way hash. There's several hash algorithms that are actually in widespread use, both MD variants and SHA variants, the message digest variants and the secure hash algorithm variants. The secure hash algorithm is certainly getting a lot more implementation time right now because, again, it's gone through government and, and private sector and public sector vetting to ensure that it meets a lot of different standards so that it, it's relatively secure. Message Digest goes back quite a ways. Uh, it's been around a long time, so it's actually in, an, in a lot of implementations as well. So you'll see these two frequently. Haval you don't see as often, but it's out there. Definitely want to be familiar with the MD and the SHA algorithms. And you might wonder what those numbers are after SHA-256, 384, 512. Those are actually the size of the hash output. The MD2, 4, and 5 numbers actually represent different versions of the message digest algorithm itself.